So it looks like we're getting a Japanese Spider-Man Marvel Legends action figure. But is this one any good and is it worth your money? Be sure you stick around until the end, soulmates, because we're going to talk about what version of Spider-Man we'd like to see next. If you support what I do, please click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single video of mine when it comes out. Japanese Spider-Man is a unique character because he's not really the Spider-Man we all know and love. In fact, he's not even Peter Parker in the Japanese TV series. The Spider-Man that appeared on that TV show was a completely reimagined Spider-Man that featured big robots and a flying vehicle and a fancy gadget that shot webbing. Even his origin story was changed. Literally the only thing that was kept was the costume, I'm pretty sure. And the reason they had to change so much was because Japanese TV executives thought that the Spider-Man that we know wasn't going to do well with Japanese audiences. So now we have a Spider-Man character that occupies a unique place in the Spider-Verse and he's even appeared in some comics and he's also appearing in the upcoming Spider-Verse sequels. For the longest time though, the Japanese Spider-Man has been mostly unknown to American audiences. So that puts us in kind of a weird place because there haven't been a lot of mainstream action figures made of Japanese Spider-Man. The closest things I've seen recently have been a boutique action figure and then a Funko Pop made of him, which is actually pretty cool. Didn't know he had a Funko Pop till I looked into this. So now that he's finally getting his Marvel Legend, how does this one stack up? Well, there's some good and there's some bad on this one. I'll start out by saying I like about half of him. I like his arms and legs and I like his head. The head looks pretty much just like he does on the show. And if you guys have ever seen Japanese Spider-Man, you see that the mask looks a little funky on him. They didn't have all the fancy CGI effects back in the 70s to make it look like the Spider-Man mask that we know from the comics and the movies now. They just had to put the mask on the guy's head and let it be as it was. Was. And well, it turns out when you do that, you tend to see the outline of the person's face. The limbs on this one look pretty good. They've got those pinless joints on and it makes it look really clean. I wish that he wasn't as muscular as he is. I know they tried to make him look a little skinnier here, but I think he's still too muscular because when you look at the guy from the show, he doesn't really have any muscle tone. It's weird for me because they just can't seem to resist making Spider-Man muscular on these action figures, but being muscular isn't really Spider-Man's thing. Being wiry is maybe, but he isn't really a huge guy and that's part of the reason that he is such a notable character. One of the cool things that it looks like they did get right though was his wrist mounted web launcher. And it looks like they got the details in the right places there, so that's pretty cool. Like I say, this is a different Spider-Man. He doesn't use his webs to get around like our Spider-Man does. He just uses them as an attack and he uses his flying car to get around instead. So considering the nature of this Spider-Man's web shooter, the web effects they've included with him are pretty appropriate. He comes with a couple of web nets that he does use on the show and also he comes with a web strand. It's kind of funny because the web net that's included here with the action figure looks more like a web than the web net that you see on the TV show that just really looks like a net. The first thing I don't like about this action figure is the fact that it doesn't have butterfly joints. I just cannot abide that in 2022. Every action figure in the Marvel Legends line should have butterfly joints, I think. And not having them on a Spider-Man action figure is such a disappointment because Spider-Man is supposed to be really, really flexible and Japanese Spider-Man is no exception. He has a lot of flexibility on the show. The other thing I don't like about this one is the torso they use, which apparently is from a Mr. Fantastic and it just doesn't work for me because it looks so outdated on this. In 2022, he really needs a torso cut and an ab crunch, but here he's got the old waist swivel and ab crunch and it doesn't look great. You don't realize how good the torso cut and the ab crunch are until you go back to the old waist swivel and ab crunch and realize, yeah, this is a lot better. Why they went with this look, they just wanted to save a couple of bucks and they did and now they're charging $28 for it. And $28 for this release seems like it's a bit much to me. Again, it looks like there's a Spider-Man tax attached to this. And 
28 bucks for what looks like just a standard action figure with a few accessories. He's a Spider-Man with an extra set of hands and some web accessories. There's nothing especially big going on here. There's nothing any bigger than like a Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure wave going on here. So $28 really, there's just no other way to explain it other than they're charging more money because it has Spider-Man attached to it. And it really boggles the mind because these prices are all over the place. There's no standardization at all it seems like when it comes to Spider-Man action figures. And honestly, what gives here? Because when I go and buy DC Multiverse action figures, Figures. There's no Batman tax attached to them. All the Batman action figures cost the exact same as every other character. There was one Batman that was a different price, but it was because he came in an absolutely enormous package. But Japanese Spider-Man comes in the standard Marvel Legends packaging. Which, by the way, is this new cardboard packaging that you can't see into. So, like I've said time and time again at this point, the in-the-box collectors are really getting the shaft on this one. And the kicker is, it seems like it's only the Spider-Man action figures they're doing it on right now. All the other action figures that were revealed during the Instagram livestream had a plastic window, but not Spider-Man and not the Mojo World 4 pack. My guess is that they're gradually going to change it over and eventually we're going to see nothing but this cardboard packaging. Is this one worth $28? That's going to be a no from me. You just saw a War Machine revealed on the Iron Man Retro card, and that one's $28, and it has a lot more stuff in the package. So is this Spider-Man worth the same as that? Definitely not. Now that we've seen this Spider-Man, what Spider-Man do we want to see represented next in the Marvel Legends line? Personally, I would like to see the American version of Spider-Man from the Spider-Man TV show during the 70s. If we're going to get one TV show version of Spider-Man from way back when, I'd like to see the other one because that Spider-Man was just as weird as Japanese Spider-Man, although he was a little closer to what we saw from the comic books, maybe. Well, Soulmates, what do you think of this Japanese Spider-Man action figure? Is this one that you have to have for your collection? Or is this one that you're maybe going to skip because you're not that into Japanese Spider-Man? Or are you kind of on the fence and you're turned off by the price tag and maybe something about the action figures bugging you? And also, what Spider-Man would you like to see next? Let me know in the comments, guys. I would love to hear from you. If you want to learn about another Spider-Man action figure that was recently revealed, be sure you check out my Amazing Fantasy 15 Spider-Man video right here.